first one being, why do you want to be on Detroit City Council? Hmm, that's a great question. Because we need ad more advocates that have actually, my personal feeling, are, are we taping this right now? Yeah. Oh, God. <laughs> Sorry about that. Oh, That's okay. okay. You can stop and start. I do it all the time. Okay. <laughs> but you have 15 minutes. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, the reason I'd like to be is because I've watched the challenges of the neighborhoods. And, you know, Detroit's in a rebirth right now. But I live in a community and I've walked several communities that have not really witnessed or been involved with that rebirth. And it comes down to the legislative branch. City Council needs to be the chief advocates for the people. And as a president of my neighborhood organization, I see some improvement, but it's declined so bad that, you know, we need to try something different. And, and I've done a lot of things. And I, I think I'm very capable and bring a skill set that, uh, you know, the hope is the big issue. And, and I, I'd like to have that hope restored. Not that anybody there right now is bad, but, you know, I think I'd do a great job and be a great asset. The city is coming out of bankruptcy going forward what skills do you think that you can bring to the table that other council members maybe don't have to help lead the city through its financial crisis? Negotiations. Uh, at the Sheriff's Department, I was the vice president of our local. I was also the bargaining chairperson for the longest arbitration in the history of the state of Michigan. And what it comes down to is compromise. A lot of people don't know how to compromise, negotiate, and or lose sometimes. I think that we can set it up where it can be a win-win for everybody because I live by this statement. The true aim of a disagreement, argument, or discussion should be progress, not victory. We can't just say no to everything. So I've been in negotiations. I think there's going to be a lot of negotiations moving forward because a lot of people don't know what pre-bankruptcy look like. So we got to understand what post-bankruptcy is going to look like for the neighborhoods as well. And the last question. In the past, city council members and even some of the current ones, once they've been elected to the position, there have been issues from their personal life that have overshadowed the work of the city council, whether it be DUIs, foreclosures, things of that nature. Is there anything in your past that if it were to come to light could overshadow the work of the council? No. And I say that I've lived a public life. You know, I worked for the sheriff's department for a bunch of years worked up at the high school, worked at the college, and most of them have a vetting process. And I'm financially secure. Um, I have a wife and two sons. I live in the same neighborhood I grew up in. Everybody knows me. And I try to live as an example, you know, that, that I would want other young men to emulate. Now, am I perfect? No. But there's nothing in my background where somebody would say, well, you know, he didn't pay this, he didn't do this, you know, he's got this in his background. No, not at all. So I wouldn't be a distraction. I, I think those things need to be asked because you know what? There's not been a lot of vetting going on until people get to that point and it causes that distraction and public confidence. And also in the media as well, people are like, well, didn't you know about this before these people ran? Mm -hmm. So that's a great question and, and I'm glad you asked that. That's my three questions. Anything you want to add? Well, I, I think the biggest question needs to be the process. You know, this is a new process. Yep. Who all has any say? Because the citizens really don't have a say at this point. It comes down to the eight city council and whatever skill set they believe will help them to move forward. You know, we, we have some big players in this city right now. Mm -hmm. You have the mayor who has influence. You have labor who has influence. You have grassroots. So you, you need a candidate that's going to bring all three of those together. And, and I think that I'm, I'm actually the perfect candidate for that. And I don't need a job to pay my bills. God's <laughs> blessed me beyond measure. Um, you know, I retired, I own a business, you know, my wife, we're, we're doing well, but the community's not doing well. So we, we need to kind of use that and, and move forward.